good uh, good afternoon everyone this is Apollo Justice is returning on the Nintendo DS part 8 and I think from what I've been spoiling myself a little bit ahead of time ju just to know how much there was left of the game so that I could already plan perhaps the next game to be streamed this afternoon uh, well in, in case I was done early uh, so yeah I do know I think at least that I should be able to finish this today so this is probably gonna be the finale and time allowing I will move on to Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow after this one uh, just gotta post this to um, discord let's see I think this is all right now. Uh, yep, yep. Okay, we're good to go. Uh, continue. Yeah, just uh, plug in this so I can have the sound coming through my headset. Uh, no, from not from shop to start, from safe point. There we go. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, yeah, he had some psyche locks, didn't he? Oh, three? I have to know more about this power of truces. It's like she can see right into people's minds. The first time I saw her do it, it blew mine. And after you were done having your own mind blown, you took her to play cards with you. Eh, gotta use the resources at hand, I always say. Yet I myself have no such power, but Trucy does. Why is that? Because she's the daughter of a uh, Grammary or something. Maybe Trucy got her power from her mother, Talasa Gramari. I will not speak of that. Talasa is officially missing, correct? And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. The stamp. That's what I have in mind. The three of you were a team once. Not that the entire country don't, doesn't already know about, uh, about this. At your peak, you were the biggest stars around. Yet there is another story behind the fame, one that not many know. Talasa lost her life during a, re a rehearsal. To you and Valand Grammarie's bullets. It was an accident. It, it wasn't me. How could I shoot my dear Talasa? I'm sure Valand would say the same thing. Why, it's just like another murder I might mention. Damn you. Her eyes. I love Talasa's eyes. To think they could read my mind was frightening. Yet there was a warmth in them that, that felt like an embrace. She is dead and Magnified Grammary has joined her. So the only one with her power left now is Trucy? Mr. Zack, I do not know. I don't need any power to see through that one, buddy. So there's someone else, someone other than Trucy. Someone who inherited Talasa's power. Ah! Ah! How would I know? My chances are slim. It would take a miracle to learn the truth. Well, we learned yesterday that she was with another man before him, so... There is someone else with the power, and I know who. Well, it's Apollo Justice. Who I have sort of deduced is, uh... The stepbrother, maybe, of Trucy's? Good afternoon, outsider life. Welcome back. Fortnite? I don't play Fortnite, I'm afraid. Th this boy. His name is... I forget. Something weird. Who could he be? An attorney. Attorney? I noticed him when I went to visit a friend's law offices. So, what are we to make of this? Oh, great ex-attorney. You can show me pictures of strange boys all you like. But you could at least say something like, I'm this boy. I could use a laugh. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you knew the facts. <laughs> this might not be 100% proof, but it's close. There's a link between this boy and Talasa. Actually, it's more of a ring. A ring? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just so happen to have evidence showing this missing link. Uh... 
photo of a young Tanasa, Trucy's mother, touch the check button for details. Spark Brushel? Well, it was him who told me. So, actually, I know something. Your marriage to Talasa was her second. How did you know? How did you know this? Her first husband. He died a year after they were wed. Yes. He was a performer. They met when he joined us, Grandma Reese, as a guest in our show. After Talasa wed him, he left the troupe for a while. And you say she had a child then? I have a photograph of her here. At that uh, at that time. Yeah, and actually, I can't help but notice something else, and I hadn't noticed until now. The bracelet she's wearing? It looks like the bracelet that, that Apollo has. That he's uh, using, he says, is, is resonating with him. We do play the 3DS games after this? I don't have the 3DS games, I'm afraid. And my laptop can't emulate them so too well, so I can't really emulate 3DS games for the sake of streaming them, I'm afraid. If I had a better PC, I would love to do that, yeah. And modding the 3DS is, uh, so has to be able to stream, it's just way too expensive. So... The Android versions? Hmm... Yeah, it's true that they are on Android. Hmm... Well, I have no plans for that in the near future, but it's true that them being on Android makes it somewhat possible. I don't have any video out on my, uh, on my phone. But it it would be difficult, but it not impossible. I would have to study how well they would run on my Android phone for one thing. But I don't have video out, so this is another difficulty that I would have to work around. Those bracelets stand out. They are a grammar family heirloom. Ah, okay. This boy wears a bracelet just like the ones in the picture. What? So that's why. Why? Th why what, Mr. Zack? I took this photograph of Talasa before she left us. When she returned, she wore only one bracelet. She gave it to her son. Mmm. I bet I know where that one where that other one went. <laughs> she gave it to this boy. Her son. What a plot twist! Well, one thing that I can definitely stream though, I mean not necessarily straight after this one, but in the near future are the Miles Edgeworth Investigations games. Those I, I could play, and I think I will play at some point. And you would want that to get the full story? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so the Miles Edgeworth games, I think I'll be streaming them anyway, and the go Ghost Trick also. I think I'll be streaming that at some point. Not straight away, because I have other games planned already, but in the near future, I think this is something that I will do at some point, yeah. This strange power, I myself do not know from when it comes. From where it comes. Yet the fact is, I'm gonna explain it like this, this game and the two 3DS games are basically Apollo's trilogy. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's nice. I mean, I know that Phoenix Wright is also in them because I saw screenshots like everyone else, but it's good to know that he is still in those games because I didn't know about that. What is it? I asked her, Talasa, once. This is what she told me. Her power responds to tension in others. Tension? If she were to face a person and they became tense, even slightly, then she would know, no matter how hard they tried to hide it from her. So she could see it. Not quite. This is the strangest part of it all. She wouldn't realize that she was subconsciously detecting this tension without the use of a particular object, or in her case, objects. Objects? Wait, were they something she wore? Yes, her bracelets. I admit the first time I saw one of those, I felt there was more to it than just fashion. But what kind of power could the bracelet have? I have made a decision. I will tell you all I know. Consider it a gift. That's nice. Trucy and Apollo. Well, I hardly need you to tell me at this point, but those two are brother and sister, yes. Well, stepbrother and stepsister, more like. And the brother, too, has this power of theirs. So Trucy has an older brother. I wonder what will come of that. <laughs> Mr. Wright, tonight after our game is done, I will return to a life of hiding. I would not see her live her, or I would not see her live her life without knowing. 
I understand. No, half brother and half sister, no step. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, it makes more sense when you say it that way, yeah. I am in your debt once again. No kidding. What I want to know is how all this got to be so messed up. Those bracelets are made of a special alloy. It is set to expand and shrink very slightly in response to body warmth. So they're temperature sensitive or something. Yeah, same mother. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right about that one. This is how they can shrink to the exact size of their wearer's wrist. And this has something to do with the power. What have I told you? The grammary power reacts to tension in others. When a grammary senses tension, they too become tense. And this tension translates into minute contractions of the muscles. So minute, they cannot sense it on their own. Their muscles? Oh, so that's what the bracelets are for. With the bracelet on, one can sense these contractions. Because the bracelet is always a perfect fit. So when the person they're watching gets tense, the bracelet feels tighter on their wrist. Precisely. But that alone doesn't really count as mind reading. I believe I understand how the process works from there. It's a simple question of eyesight. Eyesight. I guess that sounds simple enough. Have you ever heard of kinetic vision? Something about the ability to see moving objects with full clarity, right? I've heard of it before. They say athletes can see a moving ball like it was stopped if they focus. Oh, but it's not confined to sports alone. It all relies on the ability to focus. When we focus, we can see many things. The faintest twitch of the face and the meaning that lies behind it. Therein lies one of the secrets of magic. One must know the mind of a crowd before one may distract it. So basically what you're saying is, the grammaries can see really well. For them, seeing is more than believing. It is knowing. Their power relies on eyesight combined with exceptional focus. Things are starting to come into focus for me too. Of course, it is difficult to maintain such levels of focus for any length of, of time. But what if someone could tell you when to focus? Or something? <laughs> Precisely. But wait, Trucy doesn't have any bracelets. You are talking about poker, yes? The timing of when to focus is so elementary, she probably does it without thinking. You're currently playing Investigations 1 again? Well, that might be the next one that I stream in the series. Because I have other other games planned as to the, the next in line that I'm going to be streaming, but but this is some one that I will probably be streaming. Like, if not in the coming weeks, may maybe, maybe in a few weeks from now. After I've streamed maybe one or two other games in between. Because of the, the, the plans that I already have. I doubt Trucy herself has realized, realized this. That is all I know of things grammary. Thank you, Mr. Zack. If this boy's preset is the real thing, then you will use it before long. Thereby awakening his power. I'll keep that in mind. Well, shall we play a game? Ah, I've said so much. Let me say one more thing. I will tell you of that night. That night? The night my mentor magnified Grammarie passed from this world to the next. There were two pistols and two letters sent. This was Magnify's test. A test? In his last years, Magnify Grammarie worked us to be the worked us to the bone. No, to the pain. But that night I could not shoot him. So I shot the clown's forehead instead. This, it seems, was the correct answer. Take this. I give my art to you, Zack. What? It is thanks for playing along with my show. You shot well tonight, Zack. Though I would not have minded dying by your hand. How could I shoot you? You're my mentor! Bah! I thought you might say that. If I went home without shooting anything, what would you have done then? And then, of course, I would have given Valen his chance. And if I had shot you in the forehead instead, then it would be over. If you or Valen were to shoot me in the head, then I to the darkness would go, and my art with me. A fitting end, don't you think? Ah. Yet this ending, too, gives me no cause for regret. I thank you, Zack. And I am sorry. I have done much that, that was wrong in my day. It seems to me that Magnify wanted you to be his successor all along. That's why the time he gave you was earlier than Valens. Perhaps, but it is not something we will ever know for sure now. I wonder, what is Valent up to these days? Waiting for you to die? If seven years pass like this, the performance rights go to him. Ah, 
And now here I am, and his dream is ended. It's worse than that, actually. Public opinion's a fickle th thing, you know? <laughs> what? You don't mean to tell me they've put the blame for our mentor's death on him? The trial ended when you vanished, Mr. Zack. There were even rumors that Valent had helped you pull it off. But that's madness! Well, it seems that before I can once again disappear from this world, I have one more act to perform. Isn't it odd that sorting out my life should prove so complicated? Even though I'm dead? <laughs> Technically. <laughs> to some people, you are. That night, Zack Grammarie was killed. He died as Shady Smith, a mysterious traveler with a secret past. But he left one thing behind before he parted. This. To whom it may concern, seven years past, Isaac. Oh. Grammarie murdered my mentor, magnified Grammarie. I apologize for the trouble caused by my sudden departure from court and hereby confess to my crime. Zack Grammarie. To use as I saw fit, of course it killed no one. This was his way of tying up loose ends with his old partner, Valent Grammarie. Zack's confession added to the court record. Hmm. Well, let's put it this way. That can be used as leverage, the way I see it. If he tries to rob Trucy of her rights to inherit the, the, the secret of the gr grammarie to perform it on stage, if he will not relinquish those rights and stop try trying to argue about it, we can choose to give him the letter or not, or not do it. Because if we don't, then there will always be suspicions as to uh, him being the killer. But if we don't, well, I, anyway, you, you get my meaning. Present day, Sunshine Coliseum. Well, this is a blast from the distant past. Long time no see, Mr. Valent. Seven years has it been. Frankly, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Actually, I came because there's something I want to ask you. I've spoken to the press. I have nothing more to say. I've spoken to a lot of people myself and come to some conclusions. But then I realized... I needed to hear it from you. Hmm... I have walked a difficult world these past seven years. Because you couldn't perform Magnify's repertoire? Do not be deceived! Valen's skill is the real deal. I do not require my mentor's hand-me-downs. No, it was my partner who showed me on my way. Zach Grammary. His rather well-performed disappearing act seven years ago was the end. Or so I thought. Zach Grammary murdered our mentor and fled to escape punishment for his crime. You said something to that effect seven years ago, didn't you? I remember it as if... As if it... As if it were only yesterday. <laughs> Yet that was not the way of it in the end. For a while, he vanished. For a while he vanished, the suspicions upon my own person never did. His partner, Zack, vanished to protect him. That's what those thieving magpies of a press said. I had no idea. Yet that very same press comes to me, feigning interest. They cover the greatest magic show in history as if it were a vaudevillian distraction. And here must I stand, smiling at them all. What am I, if not a player in some fiendish farce? Might I suggest it's because you never made it clear what happened? Magnify's death is still a mystery to this day. Which is why I came here to get the answer from you. Here we go again. I knew I'd be seeing these sooner or later. The audience has no business stepping upon the stage. They must be content to sit and stare at the spotlight. That sounds an awful lot like something I have I heard seven years ago. Well, I must be very close, I think, so I should already have everything that is required to break him. Ask what you will. You'll get nothing from me. I'm as much a part of this affair as you are now. I have to know what happened. For seven long years, I have endured. Now, finally, the curtain lifts on my new golden age. All the miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Valent, but right now I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should shake things up. Valent, I wouldn't be so sure about those miracles. Not as long as I have this. Ah, oh, it's the, the document that says that all the rights go to Trucy. Uh, which one is it again? Uh, transfer or, transfer all of rights, yeah. 
And what might that be? I see it bears the Grammarie seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner, but I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the performance rights to magnify his miracles. What? Is that Grammarie? He wrote this? What? He passed everything to his daughter? Trucy Enigmar. Actually, she's officially my daughter these days. Preposterous! Zack's... Zack is gone. Vanished into the void. This is a genuine article. Zack was alive when he wrote this. Both myself and the not notary can testify to this. Ugh. Wah! That's a break. Yeah, right. Yeah, I thought so. Why? Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived in thrall to the end? You're not the only one with that problem. But he shot Magnify! Yes, it was Zack! It was! And then he left, and my career as a magician fell into darkness. Did you think there might be some way out of it? Say, if you could prove Zack Grammarie shot Magnify. Was that why you testified? Yes, my way out. It should have been my way out! Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Valens. Ah, uh, because now I can use that document for this. It's not exactly the way I thought it might happen, but it's not too far off either. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed Magnified Grammary? It's the last thing. It should be at the end. I believe I have the answer to your prayers right here. Zach Grammary wrote uh, one more thing before passing on. This. But this is a confession. In which he admits to the killing of Magnified Grammary. He's dead now, so... He's not going to prison, <laughs> at this point. See, all according to your plan. I am a magician by trade. Deception is my life's work. I fool the audience, give them a fleeting dream. Yet it seems the tables have turned. Now I am the audience, believing in the deceptions I have wrought upon myself. Zack wrote this right in front of me. After I explained your situation to him. Alaka... Alakazoomg... Oh, Alakazoomg? Alakazoomg? Is that it? <laughs> You do know that this confession is nothing but lies? Yes, it's my o it's my opinion that Zack Grammary killed no one. Then you must be thinking the truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill, but if one is innocent, then the one who remains is guilty. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. <laughs> so he vanished to protect me, his partner. Ha! 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 A stirring tale, tis true. Did you shoot Magnified Grammary in the forehead? If I had and I told you, what would you do? Run to the police, perchance? Do as you will, there is nothing left for me now. It is true, after all. I have little talent. I needed my mentor Magnify's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed hold of me. I knew it. So Valent Grammary did kill the great Magnify. Heh. Heh, heh, heh. Ah, 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 ah. So sorry, Mr. Wright, but it was not I who shot my mentor. But what? But if it wasn't you, then who was it? There wasn't another disciple, was there? Another disciple, such as... I don't know. Knack and talent grammary, maybe? Your wild fancies couldn't be further from the truth. Only Zack and Valent received those threatening letters. But there was another. One more person could have fired that pistol that night. I don't suppose you figured it out by now. If it wasn't Zack or Valent who shot Magnify, then it had to be the only other person at the scene, which means... Which means... Who is it? <laughs> Wait, you don't mean... Ah, oh, yeah, well, yeah, he, he, he committed suicide then. Okay. He has the great Magnify Grimari himself. So, Magnify Grammary committed suicide. Y you find it hard to believe? To be honest, I hadn't even imagined it as a possibility. When I arrived that night, the old man was still alive. He appeared to be asleep. I... I could not shoot him. But when I turned and made to leave the room, the old man called out to me. So you spoke with Magnify Grammary? Yes, and this is why I knew what he had done. Magnify transferred the rights to his repertoire to my partner, Zach Grimari, not me. I see. Then I guess I owe you an apology. I always thought you were the one who did it. You owe me no apology. Huh? 
My crime was, in a way, more serious than that of murder. What, did you hand him the gun to do himself in? What? Your crime? Is... Well, he must be the one that tore the page out of the diary. The page that passes the... The, the rights to, uh, to, to Zack Grimari. And in doing so, he casts uh, suspicion onto his partner, forcing him to disappear. And so Trucy grew up without her real father, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of consequences to what he did, so... You see, I knew that two letters had been sent. There are no secrets between partners. It was easy to find out. Hmm. That was when I understood Magnify's plan. He wanted to die by one of your hands. Little did I expect it had anything to do with the rights to his repertoire. That was when I heard it. The little demon whispering inside my heart. The demon. Let me confess, I had intended to shoot Magnify, and I planned on framing my partner for the crime. What? What? That night, I prepared something before going to Magnify's hospital room. Which was... Ivy fluid, of course. I'd seen it on an earlier visit. If Zack did not shoot, I would do the deed. Then, I would use the Ivy liquid to place the murder on his hands. That was my plan. And that's what actually what that's actually what I thought he did. For a while. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. The demon in my heart fled when the moment came. But then Magnify called me back. I am sorry, Valet. I am giving my magic to Zack, not you. You still like the draw he has. Please, help him if you can. I left the room. And then I stopped. The shock of what I had just been told consumed me. That is when I heard that fitful gunshot. Magnify Grimari, killing himself. Then the demon awoke anew within me. Zack killed him. He was the one. Frame him, and the magic will be yours. Yeah, okay, yeah. So it kinda happens like I thought it did, except for the fact that he committed suicide. I altered the scene of his suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped off the prints, then I used the syringe to, I to add the IV liquid I'd brought. Where did you procure that IV liquid, by the way? Stole it from the hospital's pharmacy? So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. Magnify died, and you framed Zack for his murder. As planned, indeed. Of course, the outcome was somewhat different than I had anticipated. Well, what do you think? Do you believe my story? Can it be believed, truly? That was seven years ago. I don't know what to believe, but... Yes. I'm glad I heard it from you, Mr. Valent. Thank you. It is I who should be thanking you, Mr. Wright. Only when I had lost everything could I make my decision. You're going to turn yourself in? My partner may have vanished, but not so my guilt. And as my guilt stays, all else begins to leave me. My friends, my performance rights, my magic. I've had enough of vanishing acts. I, underst I understand. I thought my life was ruled by a dead man. But I find I was wrong. For Zack Grimari was alive. Well, not anymore. And now it occurs to me, what if he was not the only one who survived? What do you mean? You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I, no, we never saw proof of her demise. We never saw her body. Hmm, her? The mind races and the mouth flaps on. My apologies, forget this matter. Is he talking about Talasa? I can only hope that the day will come when I again meet my partner, Zachary. Then, I shall apologize for my terrible mistake. I am glad we had this chance to talk. Thank you. Zachary, Shady Smith, whichever name you prefer, he is no longer with us. The truth revealed in that trial was only a sliver, and the impenetrable darkness that remained has taken another life. I knew what I'd have to do to push back the darkness for good and it would involve paying that man a visit. There's only one man left to visit now, so there is no mystery as to who that is. The one in solitary cell 13, with five side key logs that I have to break. Sorry sir, prisoner Christoph Given is currently occupied. 
I see. Do you know when you'll be finished? Uh, um, well... Could you go find out? Ah, uh, certainly, sir. Please, wait here a moment. My apologies to the guard, but there's something I need to see. The envelope? Is that it? Mm. That would make sense. There it is. The yellow envelope. And the sender is Drew Misham. I was right. Yeah! So the traces of the poison have to be on the... The atroquinin. They must be on the back of that stamp. When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Misham was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. It was a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the crime... at the crime scene. If this is the last letter that Drew Misham wrote, then there's something I need to do. The last thing I need to do, in fact. Here goes. Swing! Let's see if this Atraquinin spray finds anything. If there's anything to be found, it's on the stamp. Oh, sorry, I have to... ...touch it. So, this was Drew Misham's Messenger of Death. Was this stamp alright? No mistaking it. And his last letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. Gotcha. Letter from Bishop added to the court record. Finally, decisive evidence. What's this? A burglar in jail? Gavin, I didn't know you moonlighted in larceny, right? Gavin, there's something I have to ask you. Can I steal your stuff? The answer is no. My apologies, but there's not much I care to discuss. Vera Misham hasn't received her verdict yet. You follow me, Gavin? There are no known survivors of atroquinin poisoning. But it never hurts to hope. Okay, I'll be leaving now then. Right, wait. Yeah, Gavin? Would you mind leaving that letter? It's private. Oh, sorry, forgot I had it. Many thanks. Hmm. What's that? What the badge on his on his hat as a as superpowers? <laughs> what? <laughs> We've now seen all the clues in this case. Clues I gathered over seven long years. Now it is time. Every story has an ending. We've come to the final chapter, the final trial. Find the truth. You're the only ones who can. To be continued. Yay! The final section. Welcome to court. Seven years, all leading to one verdict. A verdict which you must decide. Is the defendant Vera Misham innocent or guilty? The courtroom doors are opening. The trial awaits. Are you ready to begin? Preparations complete. I never finished the interrogation of Gavin. Something inside me, rising, surfacing. Surfacing, more like. Oh. Something important lost long ago. It's close now, so close. October 9, 10 a.m. This record, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Vera Mission. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is ready to rock. Prosecutor Gavin, how is the defendant Vera Mission's condition? Acute atroquinin poisoning, according to her physician. She could die at any time, thus her absence for the from the courtroom today. Yeah, right. What? They can't put her on trial without her being here? It is unusual. They should wait for her to get better and do it then. It's so bureaucratic of them. That's being a little harsh. They can't delay the trial any longer, or they risk having no one left to try. A trial without a verdict can only cause grief. The, reco the records of this case and experience tell us this. The 
apologies to the defendant, but the show must go on. Right, if Vera dies, the trial will be cancelled. I'm not going to let that happen. Mr. Wright told me everything that's been going on behind the curtain all these years. I'm going to get Vera her innocent verdict while there's still time. Very well, your opening statement, prosecutor gave in. The prosecution's case is unchanged, is unchanged by recent events. Why did Vera Misham succumb to poison? Because she couldn't live with the guilt of what she'd done. But Vera was poisoned with atroquinine, the exact same poison that took her father's life. What better confession could you ask for? Being the killer, she would have had access to the poison. Significant, since it's rather hard to come by. Hmm, that is true. In other words, I see no need for further discussion. We could, could have had our verdict yesterday. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have no objections, I see no reason to postpone a verdict. What we need to worry about isn't the verdict, but the trial itself. The defense holds that Vera Misham is the victim, not the killer. If that's so, then you have to prove something. She was in court giving her testimony before us. Mm. Mm. Takes 15 minutes, right? Mm. The pencil, maybe? If she keeps putting, to putting it to her mouth, that would have been a way to poison her. Oh, and incidentally, it would be nice if you told us who our mystery killer was. The prosecution's objection is sustained. Ah, oh, the nail polish, maybe. Is it possible? She was, she was chewing on her fingers. And I've, I've, I've been suspecting Gavin anyway. And he was the one who gave her nail polish before to uh, quote-unquote give her courage to go in the outside world or something. If he wants to hide the fact that he was the one that made the, the, the fake thing, that sent him the poison letter and everything, the, the poison stamp and, and so on and so forth, that would make sense, I think. Tell us how Vera Mission was poisoned. I've got two things to prove here. Who did it and how? Which to hit first? Well, I think the how should tell us who and not the other way around. So, I think I should speak of how. How did the killer poison Vera Misham? I will focus first on the method used. Hmm, any comments before we begin? Prosecutor Gavin, not a bottle of or a container of the poison was found on the defendant's body. Uh... I bet it was in the nail polish. I see, so the vector of poisoning is unknown. Is the defense prepared to prove how the poison reached Vera Misham? Yes, your honor. I think, I, I don't... S I brought the idea of the pencil before, but I don't have evidence to prove that. But, I should have the nail polish in there. Yeah, there it is, sure enough. It is colorless. It even says in the description. Very well. What method was used to poison Vera Misham? Well, that's what I think. I don't see what else it could be. What's this? My, what a beautiful bottle. I'd like to give whoever designed that a hand. Is that nail polish? Hmm, it's colorless. Ah, something the matter? N no, nothing, nothing at all. Well, the poison, isn't the poison supposed to be colorless as well? I don't know if I have anything that says that. That says that the the poison is normally colorless. What I suppose it would have to be so that it would not be seen on the rim of the cup or the back of the stamp. It would have to be invisible. To the naked eye, anyway. N no, nothing, nothing at all. So the killer put poison in this bottle and made her drink it? Nah, nah, don't drink it, come on. As Prosecutor Gavin has told us, this, this is nail polish. Nail polish? It's like paint for nails. Know any women with red nails? Ah, my wife has red nails. I see, so she's been painting them all this time. Let's recall yesterday's trial. Remember when Vera was testifying to the court? Court is now back in session. Yeah, she was uh, d doing that thing. 
Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Whenever Vera became nervous, she had a habit of biting her nails. Her nails? Huh. Prosecutor gave in. When the prosecution had Vera examined, did they check her nails? I... well, I... Bailiff, have them check the defendant's nails at once. Mr. Justice. Yes? Do you know who did this? Do you know who put poison in that nail polish? Well, the person who gave it to her, I would assume. Yes. That bottle belongs to Vera Misham? Why do you ask? You know someone else who might have a bottle like this? Uh-huh, huh? Been visiting your brother in jail recently? <laughs> no, just checking. <laughs> you wouldn't be sweating that way, I think, if you didn't know who it was. Mr. Justice, you are about to accuse someone of poisoning that bottle of nail polish. Please dispense with the chatter. You realize the weight of this accusation. Here, let me show you. Understood. Your Honor. No problem, I know what I'm doing this time. Then let us ask, who poisoned Vera Mission via a nail polish? It can it could only have be it could only have been that man and he had a motive, I should think. What's this thing? Christoph Gavin? He is in jail. How is that possible? Maybe she visited him in jail or maybe he sent her the nail polish by mail or something. What's your game? My bro, there is no way you could do a thing like that. You should know that better than anyone else. Indeed. He is behind bars. Well, he already killed someone, so I wouldn't put it past him. He's been found guilty of murder once already. I know. However, that doesn't mean it wasn't possible to do what he did. What? Ask yourselves when he put the poison in the bottle. It could have been yesterday. It could have been a month ago. Maybe it was a year ago. Or perhaps it was seven years ago. But Christoph gave in the motive for killing this poor girl. It's simply inconceivable. Well, I guess this is what the rest of the trial is going to be all about. Showing how and why Prosecutor Gavin doesn't seem to think so. Because he knows. He knows the fake piece of evidence was not fabricated by, uh, by Phoenix Wright or ordered by Phoenix Wright. That face tells me one thing. Christoph Gavin's own younger brother doesn't find it inconceivable at all. <laughs> hmm. Well, Prosecutor Gavin, if you feel there is a clear and pressing need, then we may have to summon Christoph Gavin from jail as, as a special witness. Fine. I've known for some time that an impenetrable darkness lurked at the bottom of this. A darkness that has swallowed even myself. Okay, the defense's wish is granted. Let prisoner Christoph gave him take the stand. Right, okay. Bailiff, begin proceedings to call a special witness. The witness is Christoph Gavin, currently residing in solitary cell 13 at Central Prison. And during that time, we might have the results of the anal analysis of the victim of the defendant's nails. I mean, that shouldn't take that long. Ha, huh, Your Honor, how nice to see you again. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? It's not every day I'm summoned from my, solit from my solitary cell. In fact, it's never. I think you already know, Mr. C Mr. Christoph Gavin. Ah, Mr. Justice, I hear you've been doing quite well for yourself. Ah, why do I feel like somehow he's still my boss? <laughs> Stiff upper lip, Apollo, you can do it. Does this bottle look familiar? Ariadne nail polish? Why, yes, I use it myself, as did the late defendant, I hear. She's not dead yet. And? Was there something concerning this bottle you wish to ask me about? I admit I respect her for her taste in nail polish. Her taste indeed. This nail polish was how Vera Mission was poisoned. Atroquinin, was it? You're well informed about this case, Mr. Gavin, for someone who was in jail five minutes ago. <laughs> and who was not attending the trial. <laughs> Even in solitary, much comes to my desk and I have nothing to do but read. Well, Clavier, maybe you can explain this. You're being accused again. By him. Again. Ah. Oh. And? You agree with his accusation, do you? Let's hold a proper trial, shall we? Christoph Gavin, your testimony, please. I'd be delighted. The charges against you are quite severe, Mr. Gavin. You are suspected of the poisoning of the defendant Vera Misham. 
Please testify on this matter to the court. Poisoning Vera. Owning the same nail polish does not a murderer make. I have been in solitary confinement for half a year. How could I poison her? If our father died of the same poison, the meaning of which should be clear. The prosecution's case holds she poisoned her father, then attempted to poison herself. Surely, you aren't going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning our father too? Hmm, well I don't know. Mm. I'm afraid the defense's claim is sounding rather unlikely. Naturally. For one, I don't even know the Mishams. Isn't that so, Mr. Justice? No, you know them perfectly. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Justice. Begin your cross-examination. I'm accusing Christoph Gavin, my ex-boss, but I know he poisoned the Mishams. The question is, when could he have done it? Not to mention, why? Owning the same nail polish does not a murder make. Mm. Well, I know it's him who poisoned both. Well, this is exactly what I am suggesting. That he sent the letter too. What was the contents of the letter, by the way? What was that again? Mr. Drew Misham, I have deposited the one hundred thousand dollars in the designated account. Yeah, well, that's that was for the fa the fabrication of the piece of evidence. So, so it was him. He, he knew them. That that much is for sure. And he would have had the mo a motive to uh to to kill them both, so that he would not be accused of being the one who fabricated that evidence so is it something about his uh, uh th thing is is uh, his fingers maybe He has his car in his hand. Could it be? Hmm? Gotcha! There is a twitch. I figured it had to be something about his hand because I didn't see anything else move in particular. It was you who killed Drew Misham. A bluff worthy of your new mentor, Mr. Wright. Oh, really? But you see, I saw it. Right when you said her father, too. Your hand tensed unnaturally, and a little devil ap appeared to give me the news. And Let's assume for the sake of argument that you saw me being tense. What does that mean? Are all tense witnesses guilty? And tell me, was Drew Misham fond of nail polish, too? Sorry, but there's more than one way to poison a man. You don't need nail polish to get to someone's mouth. Plus, if he sent the poison by mail, it didn't need to be outside the cell to be able to, uh, to to poison him, when you think about it. And mail is just about the only thing that he has to give him access to the outside world while he's in, in his jail cell. Ah, then I must be very talented indeed. You see, Drew Misham was killed on October 6th. While I was already in my solitary confinement cell at Central Prison. If that's not an alibi, then I don't know what is. But you found a way, all the same. And I found it too. This is how you poisoned Mr. Misham. The stamp? I think. I'm sure this commemorative stamp requires no introduction. The night Mr. Misham died, he was seen writing a letter. Atra Quinnan was found on the stamp, Mr. Gavin. So am I to understand this stamp was a murder weapon? 
Yes, you are. Oh, and yes, this stamp was found in your prison cell. And there was Atroquinin on it. To boot. <laughs> that is all, Your Honor. Order! 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 Poison on the back of that stamp? After Drew Mission was killed, someone paid a visit to this witness's cell. Phoenix Wright. Daddy? That's when he found the stamp. You made Drew Mission write you a letter. That's how you killed him! What? My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Allow me to clarify this matter, Mr. Justice. All you need to do is recall Witness Park Brushel's testimony. Well, that's a thing, see? After he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? Yes, a stamp, a so-called postage stamp, end quote. He was looking for a stamp. Ergo, he had no intention of using this stamp. What are you getting at? What I'm arriving at is that this commemorative stamp was in a frame. It was mere coincidence that he used it that night. That would seem to be the case. Or perhaps you mean to suggest that I can somehow manipulate coincidence? Well, you intended to kill him, but a long time ago. He does have a point. How would this witness know if the victim was going to use that stamp? And that's in the contents of the red letter. Without that, he couldn't have planned the murder. It's in the contents of the the, the, the letter that's in the, the red envelope. Really, Clavier, you should be seeing through these weak spine bluffs by now. He's right, though. How could anyone have known Mr. Mission would use that stamp that night? It was in the, in, in the specific instructions of the letter that is in the right, uh, in the red envelope. Least of all, Christoph Gavin locked away in his cell. Well, it seems that the defense has run out of things to say. No, I haven't! <laughs> No, I haven't. You assume he had something to say in the first place. I believe the defense's bluff has been called. The defense is a bluff? I'm not sure I agree with you there, Christoph. Clavier? Honestly, I wanted to believe you, but the defense wasn't trying to get away with a bluff. You were, Christoph. What are you saying, Prosecutor Gavin? Herr Forehead, what was your accusation again? Huh? Oh, it was that this poison stamp killed Drew Misham, yeah? To which my brother responded thusly. There was no way to know when Mission would use the stamp. Yes, that's right, which is why it couldn't have been planned. Tell me, it needs to be planned. Why? Huh? Why couldn't it have been a coincidence? The defense's case is simply that Drew Mission died by that stamp. That's all. Coincidence. Ah, oh, come on, get to it. I already know what I have to do. Christoph, you tried to slip out from under his accusation by changing the subject. If that's not bluffing, what is it? <laughs> what are you up to, Clavier? I could ask you the same question, Christoph. Heh. <laughs> I silence the defense with the fewest words possible. It's called efficiency. But Mr. Gavin, that's impermissible testimony. Very well, I shall take this claim head on then. Justice. What? You accuse me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then, allow me to ask you, what possible reason could I have to kill a painter? You ordered the fake evidence from him! Hmm, indeed, it's hard to see how an attorney could come to, to want to kill a painter. Now here's something, why didn't he bring up the motive from the very beginning? Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose. So, what does it mean? It means there might be a weak spot, maybe I have some evidence to prove a motive. A motive for murder. This is vital, if not the most vital element in this case. Please consider this when making your statement. I'd say it's about this vital. That's pretty vital. It means the, the amount of the, of the gauge that I would lose if I don't play right. Well, Mr. Justice, I'm going through with this no matter what. Understood, Your Honor. I'd like to present evidence. Then let's see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin have for wanting to murder Drew Misham? Well, he's asking me about motive, not the m the M.O. <laughs> Modus operandi. Mm. Forged to look like a page of Magnify's diary. Well, yeah, that could also be something that I can show. Ah, well. 
it's one thing or the other. But I think this, from what the judge says, it seems more obvious that this is the thing. Chris of Gavin's motive becomes clear when we consider why the stamp came to Drumisham's studio in the first place. And why was that? Forgery, Your Honor. Go back seven years. Drew Misham accepts his first job for creating forged evidence. By the way, would you play the English fan translation of Investigations 2? Yup, because I don't understand Japanese, so I wouldn't have other, any other way to play it if I was to stream that one. So, yeah. Definitely. I've seen that before. A page from a diary, wasn't it? Magnify Grammarie's diary? Ah, when attorney Phoenix Wright lost his badge, yes. This was the evidence he presented to his loss. This evidence is a fake, yes, but did Mr. Wright request a forgery be made? That was never proven. The defense attorney on that case was Phoenix Wright. Who, other than him, drunk with the prospect of victory, could have done it? And why would they? Just out of curiosity, do you remember this letter? This is the first page. And this is the second page. Those were presented in court yesterday. This letter was sent to Drew Misha by the client who, re who requested that forgery. The enclosed stamp was none other than the poisoned commemorative stamp. Drew Misha drew his last breath just the other day. However, the motive for his murder was already seven years old. Seven years old? The client who requested this forgery was very cautious. He tried to erase everything, any uh, anything, and anyone with connections to the forgery to keep them from talking, but he made a mistake. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magician, so I kept it. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. The killer's time bomb was delayed. The poison stamp was sealed within a, gr a glass frame, where it sat for seven, world seven whole years. Your forehead, do you understand what you're telling us? The one who schemed up the forged diary page was the one who poisoned the stamp, and it was Phoenix Wright who presented the forged evidence seven years ago. Adding the two statements together, the one who schemed to kill Drew Misham was none other than Phoenix Wright. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, but that's not how this is going to go down. Oh, then how would it go down? I checked through the records on that case when I found this. Seven years ago, just before the trial began. Hmm, old boy. Uh, uh huh. Here. What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. And one more thing. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from you, your previous attorney only yesterday. Who was that previous attorney, by the way? I understand I am asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Phoenix Wright was put on the case the day before the trial started. He didn't have time to request a forgery. The day before? Now here's a question. Just who was Shady Enigmar's previous defense attorney? Because I didn't ask myself the question until now, but now it makes a, a whole lot of sense. It had to be him. No, this can't all be. But it is all true. There was another man, a defense attorney with a badge on his collar. It was you, Christoph Gavin. Order, order. What is the meaning of this? Witness, I mean defendant, uh, former lawyer. Let me begin by denying this. Objection! It's easy enough to look up Mr. Gavin, and impossible to prove if you can't. Attorneys are registered with the court the day before the trial begins. In other words, no record remains in the court. How exactly do you intend to prove Phoenix Wright's claim? Hmm, that would be difficult. I'm afraid this line of inquiry won't yield. Objection! Air forehead. Are you sure you don't have evidence? What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks clammy. I think he's an honest guy. I might be mistaken, but I think he's an honest guy. Evidence. Evidence that shows this man, Christoph Gavin, requested that forgery seven years ago. 
Clavier. Just prove it! Clear up these doubts now, or I swear I'm off this case. I think I'd prefer you stayed on this case, considering you seem to be on my side. He must have thought of some evidence, Apollo. Prosecutor Gavin looks like he's in physical pain. That darkness. Uh. <laughs> uh. I have to pull that darkness out of him, and proof is the only way I can. What proves Christoph Gavin's link to Drew Misham? Um. You claim Christoph Gavin requested the forgery of Drew Misham seven years ago. Prove it. It can be proven. Simply ridiculous. Why even discuss it? This evidence does not... Objection! Are you telling the truth, Apollo Justice? I am. Then... I say we give him the benefit of the doubt. Very well. But if you're wrong about this, be prepared for a penalty. A big Objection! one, apparently. <laughs> Your Honor, you do the, def the, the defense and injustice. Mr. Justice is clear clearly passionate about this claim. Should the penalty not match his passion? <laughs> now it's <laughs> now it's double the size. I haven't given a penalty like that in a long time. Well, Mr. Justice, fine, Your Honor. All I have to prove is any kind of link, something that ties Christoph Gavin to Drew Misham. Well, I'd better not get this wrong, then. Very well, Mr. Justice. Present your evidence. Show us the link between our witness and Drew Misham. <laughs> it's the yellow letter, isn't it? It's a letter from Misham to Christoph Gavin. So, if it's not that, then I don't know what it is. Letter posted by Drew Misham just before dying. Poison traces found on a stamp. This evidence proved there's a link. Objection. That scrap of paper? I'm afraid I can't let you submit that. Is there some problem? There is. How could you possibly have that? You couldn't. Hmm? Hey! That's Daddy's handwriting! Mr. Wright's handwriting? What is the meaning of this? Oh yeah, it's true! Come to think of it. Because he could not take the letter with him. Christopher gave in, told, to, told him to leave it behind. Oops! <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? If it's a, a, a fake piece of evidence, it's a poorly forged one. <laughs> if it's if it's Wright's handwriting. Ah, I see now. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? I just remembered I had a visitor yesterday. Phoenix Wright came to my cell. Except I wasn't there. Phoenix Wright? When I returned, I saw he had something of mine in his possession. Of course, I had no intention of letting him get away with reading my private mail. Mail? You mean this letter was in your cell? No. However, it appears Mr. Wright has yet to be cured of his bad forging habits. Yeah, but you just admit it that that letter actually exists inside your cell. D didn't you just, like, prove that this letter really exists? Even if this one is a fake? What if it's a forgery? It's not a very good one. The handwriting is terrible. I don't think he ever tried to fool anyone with that terrible handwriting. This is Mr. Wright's reproduction of what was written in the real letter. Reproduction? When Mr. Wright visited Christoph Gavin's cell, he brought with him a small video camera. What? Ah, that was a camera! That's why we saw his badge. He recorded his entire conversation with you, Mr. Gavin, and the contents of your personal mail. <laughs> ah. Regardless, this mockery of a piece of evidence will never be accepted by the court. Evidence based on a video, a man with no authority whatsoever claims he took. A man who happens to be an ex-attorney suspected of forgery. Hmm, prosecutor gave in? Yeah, it's gonna be tough to make them accept it, right? Uh, prosecutor gave in? <laughs> as embarrassing as this is for me to say, I'm afraid my brother is incapable of making rational judgments at the moment. Your Honor? Your decision, please. The defense's claim is denied. What? Only actual evidence is permitted in the court of law. Please remove the defense's evidence from the record. No! Ah, oh, man. What is that? Better luck next time, Justice. Ah. So what now? 
Well, we've certainly taken a detour from our cross-examination, but the defense appears to be lacking proof. I'm forced to end the cross-examination of Christoph Gavin at this point. Apollo, do something! I'm thinking, but without evidence! I don't have anything I can use on him. Very well, this ends the special witness's cross-examination. The show is over, yet the crowd screams more. Only now do I understand why. Prosecutor Gavin? Frankly, I'm relieved. This has been bothering me for seven whole years, and I'm tired of the whole youthful hang scene. Now is our chance. Let's clean out the family closet, Herr Christoph. Clavier, you're spinning out of control. Calm yourself before you say something you'll regret. Spinning out of whose control? Mine or yours? Take a moment to consider everything you've built. Your reputation as a prosecutor, your fame with the masses. You could lose it all, Clavier. Clavier. Apollo, did you see that? He's trying to press Prosecutor Gavin. Prosecutor Gavin, try to remember. What's really important to you? You amuse me, Herr Forehead. I couldn't forget what's really important to me, even if I tried. In fact, I haven't. Not even once. Seven years ago. The truth is important to him? Finally, you just couldn't resist, could you, Herr Wright? Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Might I request we put your the cross current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. State your name and occupation for the record. I'm familiar with the trial. I've watched the video several times. Didn't you find anything unnatural about it? Unnatural? Well, you did seem unusually well prepared. I mean, Mr. Wright had only just presented his evidence. Yeah, but he got a tip, a, a tip off apparently from a, from someone about uh, forged evidence being presented in the trial. And who, who better to know that forged evidence would be presented than the the actual man who ordered the forgery himself? It must have been Cr Christopher Gavin. Who, uh, uh, who told his brother about it. I mean, Mr. Wright had only just presented his evidence and the next moment you call in Drew Misham. It was almost as if... Almost as if what? Funny, it didn't even occur to me to wonder. But now that I do, I see there's only one possible explanation. Almost as if from the very beginning, you knew Mr. Wright was going to present that evidence. Ah, oh, correct. I knew that if I applied the usual pressure, Phoenix Wright would eventually come up with that forged diary page. Don't do this, Clavier. <laughs> uh huh. Wedding is pants now. I knew because you told me, Christoph. What? Well, it's not. It's not a surprise. I kind of saw it coming a long time ago. It was the night before the trial. Clavier, Christoph, hot seeing you at the prosecutor's office the day before the trial. Ah, uh, I won't be appearing in the trial, actually. Huh? Why not? I won't be facing off with you on your first trial, apparently. But in exchange, I brought information. Information? The attorney who'll be there in my place tomorrow is not to be trusted. Don't even give him the benefit of your respect. Listen, I want you to call in a special witness. Then... I wondered about it at the time. How did Christoph know so much? Prosecutor Gavin. Christoph! We were supposed to face each other in that trial. A fair fight, brother to brother. I deserve that much. You let me borrow the victim's belongings. You showed me all your research on the case. The victim's belongings? Which would have included Magnify's diary, wouldn't it? Mr. Gavin? My, my, Clavier, you disappoint me. You find trees, yet misfoot the forest. You're the one missing the forest, Mr. Gavin. You can't sweep this under the rug, not anymore. Tell me, what was going on behind that trial? Why not? I've achieved what I came here to do. I see no harm in a little reminiscing. Apollo! I think we're finally going to shine the light on the back belly of this thing, Trucy. Black belly of this thing. We've done everything we could. I hope it's enough. Seven years ago, the day before the trial, I visited the detention center at the request of my client, Zach Grammary. He's gonna lie, isn't he? Two cards. 
One card. Showdown time. Enough. You lose, Gavin. Thanks for the work. Now go. What, he says he, he got dismissed because he didn't win at cards? To be honest, I don't know what his reasons were to this day. As far as I could tell, he dismissed me as his representation because I lost in a game of poker. I can come to no other conclusion. Daddy used to say something. If you want to know a man, you have to compete. Zack wasn't watching his points or the cards. He was watching the man behind the cards, Chris of Gavin. He saw that the man was not to be trusted, perhaps. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Phoenix Wright, a second-rate attorney who relies on luck and bluffs, he dismissed me and went with that pitiful excuse for a man. He deserved to die for that error alone. Oh, so that's all it was? Jealousy? <laughs> Hold it, so the one who requested that forgery was. Oh, I'm not admitting to anything. My point is, these two men shaved me and I could not forgive that. Phoenix Wright and Zach Grammarie both deserved what they got. So you asked Mr. Misham to forge that evidence so you could win? But then, when you were dismissed as Zach Grammarie's attorney, you used your forged evidence as a trap. You fed the information about the forgery you made. Then you gave your dirty evidence to him. You're free to imagine what you will. My point is that all I had imagined came to pass. Everything went perfectly. He's not admitting to forging fake evidence, though. Ah, ah, ah. Incredible. If I wasn't laughing, I'd weep. Prosecutor Gavin? Perfectly? You're mad, Christoph. Stop fooling yourself. What are you talking about, Clavier? Tell me, how did that trial end? Cancelled when the defendant vanished. Ah, I get it. So, Christoph, you've been living in fear for seven years. What? You were afraid your forgery would be revealed and your reputation trashed. You couldn't leave things to chance, so you watched everyone involved with the case for seven years. You know, he always felt like he was being watched. That's what he said, every day for seven years. But I felt it too, journalist Shuri is being watched, end quote. Don't you wonder why Zach Grimari got rubbed out after seven years, right after coming into contact with me? Yeah. Oh, wait just a minute, Zach Grimari was seen by this reporter? How is that possible? Was he alive after being gone seven years? Finally, I knew this moment was coming. I just didn't think we'd get here so fast. Zach Grammary gone missing for seven years. Trucy's father. What's wrong, Apollo? Go get him. Right, leave it to me. You might not l like what you're about to hear, though, that your father is dead. Allow me to refresh the court's memory. Six months ago, Chris of Gavin was charged with murdering a mysterious traveler. I remember him quite well. Shady Smith, was it? Poisoned in a Chinese restaurant. Tragic. The details don't really matter right now. What matters is that traveler was Zach Grammary. What is it, Apollo? I'd smash Trucy. <laughs> huh? Keep going. We'll talk about it later. Did she already know? Someone please explain this. Mr. Justice, can you explain this? It all started seven years ago. The great magician Magnify Grammarie's death started it. Magnify Grammarie's death and his student, Zach Grammarie, was the suspect. Whoever defended Zach in court successfully would be famous beyond belief. Thinking that, Christoph Gavin did the unthinkable. He forged evidence. Drew Misham? Actually, it was his daughter, Vera, who really did the work. You took precautions when you had that forgery made, didn't you, Mr. Gaiman? Precautions? To keep people from talking, of course. These two know too much. Leave them alive and there'll be nothing but trouble. That's when you planned your poisoning of the forgers. Atraquinin. Applied to a commemorative stamp. But luck was on Mr. Misham's side. The bomb didn't go off. His daughter. She saved him by taking the stamp, I see. But that wasn't the only bomb he set up. The Ariadne nail polish, of course. You notice something when you requested that forgery. When Vera Misham is nervous, she, had, she has a bad habit. A tendency to bite her nails. 
Oh, that nail polish was her good luck charm. She was almost kidnapped once. Since then, she's been, well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. She, 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 he did mention that his daughter got kidnapped at one point. Does that have anything to do with the case? That person gave me a good luck charm. When I absolutely had to go outside, it protects me. Yes, apparently she received something, a gift. She won't tell me what it was. It was from that client, the one who wanted that note mate. <clears throat> it was his insurance. Insurance? As long as she lived quietly at home, there was no danger to her. But what if she had to go outside? If she ran into any trouble, she'd become nervous. And the nail polish would do the rest. His time bomb sat there for seven years, and then they went off almost simultaneously. Oh, I hope she lives. If you're finished, may I return to my cell now? I'm not accustomed to standing for such long periods of time. <laughs> Mr. Gavin, have you heard a single thing we've said? I mean, she's legal? Uh, depends what country you live in. I mean, 15? Depends in what on what country you live in. Or how old you are, anyway. Oh, I listened quite closely to your little tale. Quite an entertaining piece of fiction. What? Clavier, surely you understand. We're back to the evidence. The lacking evidence. In the sixth game, she's 18. Yeah, then I guess I guess that's fair then. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Nothing proves a link between him and the Atraquinin that took Drew Misham's life. Objection! What about the restaurant? You killed Zach Grammary. To keep him from talking. I killed no man of that name. Read over the report again if you like. The victim was a traveler by the name of Shady Smith about whom he, we know little else. You can't seriously think he kn I knew he was that particular fugitive. Okay, then why did you kill him? I plead my right to remain silent. Remember, this court did not convene to put me on trial. The defendant's name is Vera Misham, suspected in the murder of her father. My trial's been finished for six months now. Hmm. I'm afraid we have strayed considerably from our purpose here. This court concurs with the witness. It is defendant Miss Vera Misham who is on trial here. No, but you were doing so good, Apollo! As long as there is no evidence to support the accusation against him, this course of inquiry cannot find Vera Misham innocent. Objection! Your Honor, Phoenix Wright spent seven years collecting this evidence. Objection! You still don't get it, do you? Let us assume there was poison in the nail polish. Who then was responsible for causing Vera Mission to bite her nails? What? It wasn't me, I know that. I know that much. The one who brought that poison to her lips was you. Yeah, but I didn't know at the time that it was poison. Ah, uh, come on. Evidence is everything. There is nothing more. Nah. <laughs> I believe this discussion has reached its conclusion. Your Honor, Mr. Justice, you have performed admirably well for a novice attorney. I respect your partner, Phoenix Wright's determination as well. However, without direct proof, you have nothing. Isn't that right, Clavier? Unfortunately, yes, Christoph, you're right. That is, you would have been right until now. What? Did the news not reach your desk in solitary? The eyes of the nation are on, th are on this courtroom today. This is a trial case of a new judicial system. That's right. I totally forgotten. <laughs> the jurist system. Jurists, you say? The current judicial system has been deemed too closed off from society. This new system attempts to inject the wisdom of common citizens into the law. Common citizens? Wisdom? Is this some kind of a joke? Who could we possibly... What could we possibly gain by doing this? Entrusting our judicial system to a mindless, emotional mob of irrational mouth freezers? <laughs> common citizens have something called common sense. Common sense is not restricted by the law. Nonsense, there is only room for two in this court. Me and the law! Keep the riffraff out. Out, I say! They're not in the court, actually. 
they're watching everything by video camera. And they just heard what you said. <laughs> How can you allow this? Incidentally, the one responsible for making this happen was Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Fe Phoenix Wright? Uh-oh. He's about to erupt. <laughs> so, everything was leading to this. Of course. Right. Right. Right! Right! Ooh, he's really not good looking that way. I won't accept. I can't accept. This is no court. Law. The law is everything. Law is absolute. You'd let ignorance wine soul your courts? Christoph, it's over. Clavier. The law is absolute? You can't be serious. What? Odd. I thought you spent your life looking for loopholes. The law isn't absolute. It's filled with contradictions. The law is the end product of many years of history, the fruit of human knowledge. Like a gem, polished to a gleam through trials and errors. It is this fruit we receive and pass on and face in our time. And it is always changing, growing, nurturing it is our task as human beings. Except for you, Christoph. You aren't changing. You've stopped. You're not needed anymore. <laughs> I almost feel sorry for him. Almost. I couldn't think of anything to say. Maybe because I still haven't seen enough. But someday, I'll know what law is. I wanna know what law is. <laughs> and I'll fight to change it if I have to. <laughs> so, where do we stand? I see no need to further prolong this trial. This began as the trial of Vera Misham accused of murdering her father. The painter drew Misham, however, Several other incidents were reviewed, and we seem to have reached a conclusion. Before this court declares a verdict, I await your, your decision. Jurists of the court. For the death of Drew Misham, how do you find the defendant, Vera Misham? Innocent or guilty? I turn to you now to consider this matter. So what, I get to decide? It's obvious what I'm going to pick. If it's up to me. This ends the trial for this case. Only the verdict remains to be decided. Defendant Vera Misham is currently in intensive care. If a decision cannot be reached today, it may never be reached. The factors involved are simple. Did the defendant poison her father that night? If so, she is guilty. Or was there another reason for Mr. Misham's death? Did another person poison him? If so, she is innocent. A panel has been provided for each of you to input your decisions. That is all. Please, wait, number six. Yes, jurist number six? There's something in the jurist's handbook here. Persons involved with the case may not be jurists. That is correct. I have looked into all of your, all your dossiers. None of you were involved with the development of the case. With the development of the case, I see. Does that answer your concern? It's time for your verdicts. Make your decision in the case against Vera Misham. After seven years, the truth is ready to be here, to be heard. Judge wisely. Judge well. I guess the canon answer is to say that she is not guilty, right? What's that? What's that in the background? Oh! She's alive? And so a verdict was reached on October 9th to 14 p.m. The first verdict under the jurist system. Innocent by unanimous decision. The record will show that when the verdict was an announced, special witness Christoph Gavin laughed. A laugh louder than any ever heard before or since. A laugh that echoed in the halls of justice, lingering for what seemed like hours. October 10th, 8.30 a.m., the morning after the trial, in an intensive care ward, a true miracle occurred. Vera Misham opened her eyes. 
Oh, come on. That's the r that's Phoenix's room from the first case with his DVD collection and his uh, plum juice bottles or something. <laughs> Vera, I'm so glad. I... Don't cry, Apollo. I'm happy too and proud. You did well, Apollo. When I thought about... What if Vera... I... Hey now, don't you start crying too. I'm um, sorry you had to see us like this. Ah, she's smiling. Vera? Thank you so much, Apollo. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have pressed you like that. If if I hadn't, you never would have bitten your nails. No, I was wrong. Staying locked inside like that, clinging to my good luck charm. Vera. When I opened my eyes and saw you, I finally understood. It's important to be a part of the world. To see things with your own eyes. It looks like that poison had some effect after all. It killed off whatever was holding Vera back from life. I knew you'd pull through, Vera. I mean, that's what Apollo was fighting for the whole time. Your future. I won't forget it. Here, let me thank you. No, really, it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's not necessary. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, look, it's me. <laughs> I love it. Thanks. <laughs> and Apollo. <laughs> Is that me? The hair. She really captured your essence, Apollo. Well, I think so at least. That reminds me. Do you know where the other lawyer is? The other lawyer? Oh, you mean daddy? Except he's not a lawyer anymore. It's my fault, isn't it? I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. No, it's okay. I'm through looking away from the things I've done. I hope I can look him in the eyes again someday and apologize. I'm sure he'd be happy to hear that. He brought all those things for me when he came to visit earlier. Yeah, that's just an excuse for reusing the same asset, but okay. <laughs> we'll let it slide. You gotta go? Yeah, okay, no problem. Have a good one, outsider, outsider life. You mean that stack of videos? Mr. Wright finished watching them all. <laughs> you know, I knew my real daddy was alive. Huh? I was there seven years ago, remember? I was the one who helped him vanish from the courtroom. You did what? How? I'm not telling. <laughs> you promised me that day you went away. We may not meet again for some time, Trucy. But know this, I will be watching. And one day, I shall return. You're the next grammary after all. <laughs> oh, Trucy. In the end, he couldn't keep that promise, could he? It's okay. Phoenix is my daddy now. Even if he can't really piano play the piano. Daddy can't. <laughs> oh, and I've got you two. Even if your voice is kind of loud sometimes. Glad I made your list. Hey, come to think of it. Where is daddy? The one who can't play. Do you know Apollo? I think he said he had to meet someone. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it's a new mommy. <sighs> <laughs> oh, Trucy? Hmm, yes, Vera? I was wondering, could you show him to me once more? Sir Hat, was it? Oh, he's not been knighted yet. Here goes. Do us an impersonation of Mr. Hat. Objection! Um, <clears throat> Not loud enough. And I like Miss Magic Underwear better anyway. That's Magic Panties, Apollo! <laughs> Papa of the year. So your memory's returned. Mr. Wright, was this all a part of your plan too? I don't know what you're talking about. When I lost my memory, I was reborn as La Miroir. But you knew my true identity, did you not? What? No, no way. That is why you chose me as one of your jurists. Ah, you're thinking into, the, into it too much. Besides, there was no guarantee that regaining your memory would make you happy. Of course it is a happy thing. For so long, I thought I was alone. But now I know I have children, two dear children. I'm so proud of them. This too, I think, is thanks to you. Are you going to tell them? They do not know? Nope. They don't know their mother. They don't even know their siblings. I will go to them when the time is right. Until then, I... Don't worry, I'll take care of them for you. They're very important to me too. A little annoying at times, but still. I have to keep an eye on her at least. Because I'm the only one who knows how she really feels on the inside. 
your bracelet. Yes, I've seen a lot of mysterious things these past seven years, but your bracelets were the strangest of all. I remember meeting him half a year ago now in Christoph Gavin's office. And then I met you, two fates this time to intertwine. And I was there when they crossed. I'll never forget that. Such a small thing, that bullet, yet it tore who I was away. Oh, okay. Ten years ago, during a simple rehears rehearsal. It was a miracle no one died, but I didn't survive that accident. That is why I left the troop, my family. <clears throat> now my memory has returned, I am myself once more. For the first time, I am glad to be alive, Mr. Wright. Speaking of miracles, Vera Misham regained consciousness this morning. I can only hope she has, she's as glad as you are. It is a strange thing, fate. Sometimes a life is taken, sometimes a life is spared. You know what I've been thinking? People don't die that easily, really, as long as they've got something worth living for. And that's pretty much the end of my story, for now anyway. I've still got a long way to go, and this power of mine, well, it needs some work. But there is hope now. We'd lost it, but somehow we found it again. That's why people are smiling again. Hope. Yeah, I think I'll keep at this lawyer thing for a while. Oops, training time. Gotta go. Cords of steel. Here comes justice. Objection! Ah, with that it's over. So... Apollo Justice and Trucy turned out to be step, uh, not step, half brother and half sister. And La Miroir turned out to be the missing mother of the two. That was a twist, quite the twist. Had Grammarie Nanal back. It's not every day you get a trial that rocks harder than one of your gigs, yeah? That's why it's over. The governors are breaking up. The news caused a run on tissues at supermarket nationwide. You're the real stars now. I look forward to our next jam session. did a little stylish something for the for the ending while well, it's finally over you know thinking about it I've been a piano player longer than I was a lawyer now that everything is sorted I've, and I've got time on my hands maybe I'll take some lessons or maybe I'll take the bar exam again I mean we know now that you did not forge evidence so Why not go back to the courthouse? Hmm. So I was standing around eating snackoos the other day, as usual, when I got this crazy idea. What if they were golden? You could augment the crunch, or better yet, make them ding. Ah, uh, the power of science, although the preservative might not be 100% safe. Background graphics. In an unlikely event, you are wanting Russian feast, and the only thing golden in a restaurant is borched. Duh, but if grades or challenge is being required, then come to the hideout. You know what to ask for. How many of those are they going to be? K. Ashimoto. Hmm. So Kitaki Pastries is getting back to its eastern roots. Spread the culture. Yo, boss, culture time. This is how we write roots, capiche? 
but we're still about giving back to the people. Yo, boss. PR time. And this is how we write people, alright? <laughs> Kanji. Not that the Wookiee's paying any attention. Woo, kids! Who's it gonna be next? Ah. Bizoy! Chinese characters on cake was a fly idea like 3,000 years ago. Man, you wanna make it today, you gotta keep it real, you know what I'm saying? Yo, that's why I made the OG cracker, for real. Doesn't look like a cracker. I know I... It don't look like a cracker. Gee, what? You want me to call it a muffin? OG muffin? Yeah, because I was going to say indeed. It doesn't look like a cracker at all. Ah, this guy. I don't know where all this talk about food is coming from. You ask me, there's only one food, and that's noodles. Noodles forever. <laughs> I got a new one, too. See? This time, I just put a big chunk of salt in the ball. <laughs> Why pretend? Eldun's noodles is about the salt. Salt forever. Ah, it's a panty thief. Panty thief. My exceptionally blah blah blah. You see, they used to call me Wesley Stinkler and Wesley Stinky Hands, Sticky Hands. But no longer. I have a new name, one that reflects my true academic, academic nature. Wesley Siko, reporting. Yes, curiosity is a sickness, and I am the cure. All yeah, right. Uh, whoops. Absolute quality Europe. <laughs> Asuka Hayashi. Ah, there she is. I don't know how to thank you for all you've done. Light has returned to my life, and with it, joy. I may have lost years, but I have gained a treasure. Two treasures, in fact. Tell them! I will think of them when I write my next song. Why don't you tell them? Purely and simply. Brush a 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 here back on the beat with another interview. Hey, how do I feel about how things turned out? No scoop yet, but journalists' confidence in mint condition. End quote. <laughs> Weirdo. Executive pro producer Kenji Keiji Nafune when he was still at Capcom. I've decided to keep painting. Originals only, of course. I suppose I'll have to see a bit of the world outside to find what to paint. But I know there are good people out there now. I've met them. The door is open. The world is waiting. Thank you. Yeah, shoot, Takumi. drew them and this is the end I suppose seems like it yeah uh, it goes back to the yeah it goes back to the title screen okay so uh, well I'm done with this game for now uh, I will very briefly interrupt the stream and setting th and set things up so that I can start streaming Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow also on the Nintendo DS, and that way I can remain on the same console. Uh, that that's kind of the idea that I had. So I will be stopping the stream now. Uh, just take a few minutes to prepare things, and I'll be right back. So stay tuned if you want to see more. See you in a, in a few minutes.